Good morning today from Botswana. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about something that I'm facing a lot here, and I'm sure some of you have faced it. Uh, I certainly faced it in the United States also, not as much as here. It's very universal here. We keep getting this message, uh, to get from God, you have to give. Uh, one time I heard a pastor speaking about, uh, he had five conditions of that you should meet in order to expect your prayers to be answered. Now, I also had something like this from George Mueller, a saint of the 19th century, which I will share on a video in the near future. But I was interested to see uh, what the pastor would have to say. And one of the things he said in there was, if you're not paying your money, you won't get a blessing. Uh, so we need to look at the biblical uh, standpoint on this. I don't know how churches have gotten so greedy, uh, but money is a corrupter. We cannot serve God and mammon. Giving? Yes, absolutely. God's people are told to be giving, and they should be. But let's look a little closer at Scripture and just this concept that to get, you have to give. And this is many times, uh, many times the case. Recently, I had heard the message, and I believe it was a denomination. They were trying to, to raise more money for a building, uh, like for their district. It was something, I believe, if I'm right, that they were making for like a conference center, something like that. So in other words, it really wasn't doing a lot to further the gospel anyway, but they were trying to raise money for it. And the tactics used by the person speaking uh they range from guilt, you know, trying to induce guilt if you're not giving or not giving enough, to bribery, which is how you will be made rich if you give to God. And uh, just more or less, it could be riches, it could be, uh, it could be uh, just any type of blessing that you wanted to receive from God. And the scripture has some things to say about this. Now, you might remember in Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip the Evangelist, Philip, one of the apostles, was sent, and through him, through him, a whole town was coming to the Lord. Many were being converted. And it tells, of the, it tells the story of the sorcerer named Simon, who had had the town bewitched by his sorceries, but he also came to the Lord. But when Peter came down, and he was praying for that these people would receive the Holy Ghost, so needed for the believer. And Simon saw that the gift of the Holy Ghost was bestowed by the laying on of hands and such. He offered Peter money so that he might be able to do this too. And this is how Peter responded. Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. And he was advised after that to repent, if he may yet be forgiven. And so you see here, this is a little bit of a reverse of what I'm talking about. Because today, typically it is the leaders, you know, from the pulpit, they are inducing you to give to them and saying, then you will be blessed. And uh, however, we also encountered someone that was perhaps like this. Uh, and they, they came up and they so used of God, so merciful to provide us payment for a few groceries that we were shopping for. It was a true blessing. But they said how they were sowing seed. Now, I hope that that seed was for eternity. I mean, we, we got to share with them a little bit. And I feel confident that this person is at least a professing Christian. But what seed was he sowing and why? Our rewards will be in heaven. Uh, but many times, you see, I just use this as an example. Many times people are being taught that to get a blessing from God, you have to give. And so I have the question, what does God need from us in a material sense? What do we have that he hasn't created? And if we have to give to get, how does that relate to the gospel of grace in the New Testament? Of course, in, in line with this, I'm going to be alluding to Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 12, which is the typical scripture used 
to induce people to give and to say God is telling them that they need to get up to date with their tithes and offerings. So let me just give you a couple scriptures to think about. And I ask that you would bear with me as I look them up. We see, first of all, as we look at Romans 5, 8, we are reminded, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So what was it that we had to give God for this unspeakable priceless gift? There is nothing we could give. So why is it that if we need his blessings in our lives, that unless we give materially, and typically you will hear this, you will hear this in relation to a church offering, put into the offering plate, and then you will be blessed. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. And so I ask, I ask, what is the gospel of grace? And what do we have that we, that, uh, we can give to God? James 1.17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above. It comes down from the Father of lights. In other words, we don't have anything we can really give him. What we have is what we have received by grace. He does ask us to obey him, and he, and he will bless us. But then again, as he said, when we have done all of those things, which we are commanded to do, we should call ourselves unprofitable servants, doing that which is our duty to do. We do it out of love. Someday we will be rewarded eternally, and uh, we will be rewarded beyond anything we can imagine. But if we still have the world in our sights for material, that is a problem, just like it was for Simon the Sorcerer. I also ask you to think about Romans 8.32. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It's telling us to ask. If God has given us his son, what will he not give us? And the scripture says, freely. Yes, freely. I praise God for his mercy because in my flesh I cannot please him. And I know this. I do love him. I want to obey him. But my question is, what do I have that I can give to God? And I want you to, to just uh, hear these next scriptures with the thought to tithes and offerings. Okay, because we're going to look at Malachi 3, 8 to 12 last. But I want you to hear this. And this is from Luke 18, 9 to 14. Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his house, house justified rather than the other. Everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Didn't seem like the Lord was too concerned. He wasn't commending uh, the Pharisee very much for his tithes. He was looking at the heart. He was looking at the relationship, which is where the Lord always looks. And we ought to, uh, we need to remember this. I also just want to read to you from Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. So you'll know it has always been the same, Old Testament and New. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? Where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Oh, that we would remember that. Poor and of a contrite spirit. A repentant spirit, and trembles at his word. This is what God is looking for. And I ask that you would remember these examples as we go to Malachi. 3, 8, 8 through 12. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 7. But I need to tell you something right up front. When we're looking at the tithes and offerings scripture from Malachi, 
Okay, the tithes and offerings are under the law of Moses. And in Acts chapter 15, it is clearly shown that we are not under this law anymore. There were Pharisees that had believed in Jesus, and they were telling the Gentiles, they were saying, hey, you know, you believe in Jesus? That's okay, but you need to obey the law of Moses also, or you won't be saved. And it was clearly decided and shown in Acts 15, 20 and 29, we are not under obligation of the law of Moses, which includes tithing. You may tithe if you want to. It's a voluntary thing. If you're looking toward the giving that God instructs New Testament believers, please go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, uh, every man as he purposeth, purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And just so your leaders won't be too upset with that, in 1 Corinthians 9, it makes sure that we know that we should be giving to church leadership, that if they are indeed, you know, preaching the gospel and they are doing the duties of a pastor and, and everything, and that's, that's what they do, they should be compensated for it because otherwise they'd be uh, foregoing an income that they might make otherwise. You can read that for yourself, 1 Corinthians uh, 9 verses 9 through 14, and uh, also 2 Corinthians 9, 7. That is the New Testament instruction for, uh, for believers to give. It, it does not come from Malachi chapter 3. Okay, but because that might sound too easy to some, I'll read it anyway. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Remember that, they are gone away from his ordinances. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Number one, I want, to, I want to point out to you that there is nothing in here that tells you that you are going to make thousands of dollars if you give to the Lord. He says he will pour you out a blessing. He does not identify what those blessings are. For the children of Israel, those blessings, even as, you, as said right here, the fruit of the ground, they need good weather. They need water. They need rain. Okay. Maybe they want peace with the other nations round about. That would be a blessing. A blessing to have children, to have a good family life. Blessings, not necessarily material wealth. And yet many times today is presented, oh, look what God is going to do for you. And I can pretty much guarantee you that if you are coming to God to get rich, you're not going to make it. Because Jesus said directly, you cannot serve God and mammon. You will either you will serve the one and you will hate the other. You cannot serve both. So be careful where your priorities are and really surrender your life to Christ. Something else I just want to point out to you again is talking about how they have gone away from the ordinance. And so it was at this time they are still under the law of Moses and God is pointing out to them the ordinances of giving that they are not fulfilling. And this is just one of, of many ordinances. But as you have seen, even from what I read in Luke and from what I read in Isaiah, God is really not impressed with our giving. There is nothing that we have to make him rich. His pockets are not empty. All the gold is his and the silver is his. Now, the way it is worded here is very strong. This guy is saying, you have robbed me. He's letting them know. And yes, so by this time, they were no doubt pulling back on their offerings. They are in, a, in captivity. Okay. Through Cyrus, they had rebuilt uh, the temple and they were allowed to do this, but they needed to be providing. 
and providing for the Levites and uh, those that were ministering from within. So this is just a rebuke for one of the ways in which they were falling short. If you read Malachi, you will see more of that. It's only four chapters long. You can read it in one sitting. But so I'm just trying to say, I get a little tired of hearing uh, Malachi 3, 8 through 12, just being beaten to death uh, in order to get money. But I don't want to say that you shouldn't give. God does want you to give as he directs you, okay? As you are moved by the Holy Spirit, you see someone in need and you meet that need. He has also told you to do your alms in secret. Many times that is not happening. Unfortunately, we, we are seeing that too much here. There is a great respect of persons and therefore a great respect of the gifts that they give. So I thank you for listening and I pray that God will bless this to you according to his word. Goodbye.